Hey guys, welcome back to Bumble TV. Guys, today I'm checking out Don't This For Allah Knows. Guys, I feel this is going to be very, very, I, I won't say inspirational, but very, very educative. Because I feel you knowing things that Allah is making you go through. You know, things that God is making you go through actually makes you to be more relaxed. In the sense that you put your faith in Him because He's the author and finisher of our faith. So, let's get straight into this. I'd like to share with you beautiful hadith this evening. The hadith is in Sahih Bukhari and commented on by Imam al Nawawi as well. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, There is nothing that happens to a Muslim, whether it be physical tiredness, physical sickness. I don't think this is any type of worry or anxiety, any type of sadness, any type of harm from others, or any type of depression or trauma. Even the tiny sting of a tiny thorn, except that Allah compensates that person by forgiving and wiping away some of their past sins. First of all, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said the harm of something called nasab. Nasab means physical tiredness, whether it's small or big. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not just isolate it or talk about tiredness in worship for your hereafter, although that is great reward. But the hadith is general. It means any kind of tiredness you go through in worldly gain, whether you're going... Guys, I'm sorry I actually caught this short, but... As this was going on, something came into my mind. I came across the video and the person was like, if you commit a sin and, you know, if you want to be honest, that some sins, sometimes we commit sins and something just stop working well for us for a certain period of time. And the person was like, that is God trying to make you, like, see that what you did was wrong. He's trying to make you pay for that sin. I would say pay in a way because our sin has already been paid for, but... God is trying to put you to order that what you did was wrong. That's why, because I feel for any for every action, there's an equal amount of opposite reaction. So anything you do, I'm going to have to repercussion. And God will actually approve it. And sometimes people always blame Satan. I think that's what you guys call it. You call it Satan. People actually, people mostly blame Satan for evil things that happen to them. I believe that God is superior and god knows everything most times god does it for a reason in the bible it says when one door closes another one opens and we just have to put that faith in god guys let's just get back into this sorry for cutting it i won't do it again going to work and you get tired you go to school you go to uh, buy your shopping for your family or for yourself whether you go out to do exercise and you go through physical tiredness, even at home, you're cooking, cleaning, looking after your family, all these types of physical tiredness, Allah compensates your sins for going through them. Number two is wasab. The difference between nasab and wasab is that this is sickness. Any kind of temporary sickness or permanent sickness, you also get compensated for that by forgiveness. Number three is worry or anxiety. And this is usually about worrying about things of the future that you fear a little bit, whether they are known or unknown. You are worried about an exam that's coming, worried about uh, an interview that's coming, worried about uh, whether your business will fail or be successful, worried about all sorts of things in your life, worried about your children or yourself. These things you also get compensated by Allah for going through them. Number four is any kind of sadness, things of the past that have happened to you. You've lost a family member, a loved one, someone in your family or a friend or someone whom you held um, you know, in high esteem was sick or ill and you're affected by it. Or you're affected by something else that you've seen in your life and it still affects you till now. It could be also a trauma, an accident, something that you've gone through. Allah compensates you for it as well. Number five is 
uh, adhan. Adhan means harm. And usually it's the type of emotional or mental harm that people do for, to you. Whether it's accusations or defamations or someone hurts you with a word or says something to you, backbites you and you hear about it. These things harm you and they affect you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates you for it. Number six is uh, gham. And gham means a deep sadness. Usually depression can result from it. And yeah. that is when you're sad or you're affected deeply by something of the past to the point where you can't think straight anymore. Your mind is cloudy. You can't judge well. You feel like you're about to faint. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even acknowledges and knows that feeling and He compensates you for it. Then the Prophet peace be upon him said, even a tiny sting of, 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 of a thorn that hurts you. And subhanAllah how we started with the tiniest thing that you can get injured with, like a little prick of a thorn or a needle. That means everything above it. Imagine. Imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates you with and what He sees. And now the other question that we ask is, okay, this is for a Muslim. Yes, and that's because a Muslim anticipates this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and in the next. But what about a non-Muslim? Well, there is a verse in the Quran which says, whoever wants the reward in this world and its decorations, we will give it to them in full and we will not take a little bit of it away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just and fair. Even a non-Muslim, obviously he or she does not expect the reward from Allah because they don't believe in Allah or the reward in the hereafter because they don't believe in the hereafter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still for the non-Muslim who does good unto others and is patient will reward them in some way in this world. Because Allah says, you will only get that which you intend and work for. What you want, this is what you will get. But for a Muslim, because you have the anticipation and the belief in Allah in this life and in the next, that. you get it here and there. For the non-Muslim, here and even in the hereafter guys i know i said i won't force but i'm sorry this is also like i still believe in this because i believe that what you want you get yes what he said is absolutely like i'm feeling blessed watching this video because i'm feeling blessed watching the video because i feel it's really really educated and i i, I believe that what we say in the Bible, knock and you don't open to you, seek and you find, ask and God will give you. So, like, it's the same thing, like, it's, it's beautiful. Me hearing this coming from somebody, it's actually touched me in my heart. When you talk about depression, guys, I feel, I won't say everywhere I'm going through depression, but I feel everyone has feel sadness in their heart. And it's actually, it's actually very, very sad thing for you to feel it. It's not good at all like if you feel that like and if you're feeling it you can reach out to someone like talk share i believe a problem shared is half so so please talk out let's get back allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not oppress or wrong anyone your lord does not oppress his slaves or his creatures i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift your struggles and ours and to relieve you from any pain that you are going through, have gone through, or in the future will go through, and to grant me and you immense patience and perseverance in these tough times, and the tough times to come, and the tough times that have passed. One of the very powerful lines of Ibn Ata'illah Iskandari rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that throughout this, the world's history, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overwhelms one group of people with ease, and he overwhelms one group of people with hardship, and you rarely find people in between. What does that mean? You know, if you study history, economic inequality is nothing new. It's existed throughout our world history. Usually the rich are filthy rich and the poor are really poor. That's the way the world has worked. The elite usurp the resources that exist in the world and usually the richest people in the world are one or two percent. That the poor are very poor and that the rich are very, very rich. And there are two paths to Allah. There is the path of ease, which is to re be responded to with gratitude in this world. And there's the path of hardship to which the response is patience. Both of these arrive at Jannah. The majority of people will figure it out in hardship and not in ease. And that's why the majority of Ahlul Jannah, the majority of the people of paradise, are poor people. They make up the majority. 
because it's easier to be distracted by wealth than it is to be distracted by hardship. It's far easier. Now, if these are the two paths to Allah, if today. I was to present a choice to each and every single one of you and say you can either be put in ease and be grateful or you can be put in hardship and be patient, there isn't a single person in here, I think, that would say, I'll take the hardship and patience. Each and every single one of us would say, okay, great. Let Allah give us and we'll be in ease and we'll say Alhamdulillah and we'll be all good, right? That's how each and every single one of us would naturally respond. And we will protest our case to Allah. Ya Allah, get me out of this hardship and I will be grateful. But Allah knows what will happen to you. Allah knows what will happen to your personality. Allah knows that if this dunya is given to you, it will distance you. And Allah holds it back. And never equate your situation with your status. Surah Al-Kahf. Allah punished a man by giving him an extra garden. Allah loved a couple, so he took away their child. Think about that. If you're that couple and if you're that man whose gardens are increasing, and that couple who just lost a child, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that couple, and this person is only further entrenching himself in disobedience and in disregard and ruining himself in the hereafter. Uh, what is important for us is to draw inspiration from the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know he was and is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he had more tests than any one of us. If you name the tests you have in your life, he had tests which were more difficult. He went through economic hardship. He went through days when there was nothing to eat. He went through days when they called him all sorts of names. He went through days when they threw things at him to harm him and injure him. He went through days when he lost his spouse. He went through days when he lost his little children. He lost all of his sons, all of his daughters during his lifetime besides one. And he went through days when people made armies to come and fight him. He went through days when he was ill and sick. And he went through days when he uh, struggled in so many different ways but he was always the happiest man he always thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was the one who kept on telling us when Allah loves you he tests you let me show you something many of us sometimes we forget to call out to Allah dua we take uh, you know very quickly we complete our salah the minute you have a big problem you know the the for example financial crisis and you you are struggling someone is asking you for x amount of money you need to pay it or you are sick and ill or something has happened very negative what do we do the first thing we want to do is to make friends with allah because we know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to sort the matter so we say astaghfirullah alazim astaghfirullah alazim astaghfirullah for what for whatever i did in the past because now i want to call out to allah oh allah help me oh allah forgive me Oh Allah, I'm in need. Oh Allah, I love you. Oh Allah. So we get up at night. Tahajjud. Forget about not having time. We create the time. Because the problem is big. When I was young, we used to witness people making dua. So some they do this and they raise their hands. So we say, Mashallah, this man has a small problem. And some they do this. They say, this man has a problem. I remember one uncle was doing dua with two hands right at the top and shaking his hands like, eh, eh, you know. And I said, this man has a very, very big problem. Subhanallah. So it, it softens our heart to make dua to Allah. So Allah loves that condition so much that these people have turned to me. They are calling out to me. They have softened their heart. There's no salah missed. They have promised not to do bad and so on. So Allah keeps us in that condition for a while. Because He loves the, the softness that we have developed towards goodness. So uh, there comes a time when, when the problem is solved. Our tahajjud stops, our dua stops, our bad habits start once again, we, start, we falter once again. So Allah puts another issue in our lives. Is that a gift or it's not a gift? For Allah to bring you closer to Him, no matter how He did it, but it was a gift. So this is why the hadith says, when Allah loves you, He tests you. And another narration says, the greater the test, the greater the reward. Just like you have examinations in a school. You enter the school and you need to have exams. You can't say, I will be in the school, but I don't want tests. And then when you are graduating, for example, from university, you cannot say, I want a test which is for grade one. 
They will ask you very difficult questions because the certificate you will get at that stage is going to be a far greater one than the one that you had got earlier. Same applies those who are tested with massive tests. When they qualify through the sabr, Allah says that the, the recompense of the sabr, endurance and patience, uh, those who were patient or engaged in sabr, it shall be without limit, you know, unlimited. It's a big reward, huge. So Allah keeps us that way. So don't look at these tests as, you know, hardship and so on. Look at it as opportunities to get close to Allah. Keep on crying to Allah. Keep on asking Allah, you know, remain steadfast. Yes, if someone is oppressing you, you may seek justice. You can do something about it. If the matter is serious and there is oppression, you may seek justice. That is part of sabr as well. But the point being raised, do not despair. It does not mean Allah hates you. It does not mean Allah doesn't like you. In fact, the Quran tells us at the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, do people think that it's enough for them to say that we are believers and then they are not tested? They will definitely be tested. When you say you're a believer, your tests are bigger because now you are in the school. Do we go outside the school and test people who are not yet in the school to say, I want you to write this examination? They say, hey, go away. I'm not even in the school. So the kuffar, Allah says, do not let the, the, the goodness that the kuffar might be in deceive you. It is only provision for a short period of time. They, they will not be tested by Allah in the same way because they haven't yet entered the school, meaning they haven't yet declared their shahada. Once you declare your shahada, Allah will test you and test you more and test you more. So the mu'mineen have bigger tests than others. Do not despair, my sister. Guys, I'm pretty sure the guy that last spoke was Mufti Mek because I swear I can hear his voice. Guys, even though, even though I can't watch, I can't see him, but I can hear his voice. I can tell this is a blessing. Like, which only trying to make you know that God is in control no matter what you do. No matter the test you face in life, God always has your back. Like, He created that test for you. Yes, this actually happened to me before. Like, if you're drifting for God, guys, God will just have a way to bring you back to Him. You, you just can't be smarter than Him. As far as you have, accept, you have accepted Him, He'll just try His way to bring you back. And I watched the video on TikTok, and the guy was like, if you commit to sin and things stop working well for you, then you go back to God. Then when things start working well for you, you drift from Him. That God will always keep on bringing situations into your life so you can always come back to Him. But when you focus solely on God, and even if trials come, it's God trying to prepare you for a great attack. And this has actually happened to me, guys. Like, anytime I have trials, I just try to see it in a positive way. God made this happen, so what am I about to learn from it? Or what is God trying to show me? Because if you see it like that, if you always believe God, is in control guys i feel you won't have stress in this life like you won't feel stressed like it was people i couldn't like nah i, I have to keep that to myself guys don't forget to like share subscribe to my channel i'll see you next time guys first